have to have a good understanding of the West. There's a way in which a lot of people who turn to the East in our time are feeling, in a certain sense, I think, the crisis of the West. And they look to the East in order to find some kind of a supplement to aid them in that crisis, or perhaps even a solution to that crisis. The problem, of course, is that in order to do that, um, you have to have a good understanding of the West. There's a way in which a lot of people who turn to the East in our time are feeling, in a certain sense, I think, the crisis of the West. And they look to the East in order to find some kind of a supplement to aid them in that crisis, or perhaps even a solution to that crisis. The problem, of course, is that in order to do that, um, you have to have a good understanding of the West. Um, you have to have a good understanding of the West. Um, you have to have a good understanding of the West. Like um, the idea of equality before the law, which is something we've talked about. This kind of equality is something which you see reappearing in um, European society, a good and it is something which is, you know, employed to greater or lesser extents and in various forms in various European communities. European um, communities. Freedom, of course, has a very, very long standing and central role in European communities' histories and in our societies. I think that uh, European, European history cannot be understood outside of, uh, without European the concept of communities. I think this is an error that many have to have a good understanding of the West. Our traditions um, by throwing history and so throwing freedom out the window. That's what I'm concerned about, is the overly authoritarian strand. It's such a swing the pendulum back. I'm always very aware of that. There's an extreme, we talked a little about extremes recently. Well, they think that the solution is just the opposite extreme. And I, I wonder if authoritarianism is not in our... Again, certain European cultures tend towards it more than others. We have to acknowledge that as well. But go on. Well, I, mean, I think that you know, a lot of our European West were dealing with these concepts that were manhandled in the Enlightenment. They were changed fundamentally in the Enlightenment. And they're not the same as they once were. And the consequences of that change have led to very startling changes in our society. When we try to trace those changes back, we find ourselves confronted with the concept um, rather than, you know, in its original form, a good understanding of the form, but we don't see that historical progression. This is another point at which I think the study of history is very important to us. So as an example of that, a concrete example of that, the idea of freedom, which we were just discussing. Now, the idea of freedom originally in, in places like ancient Rome with libertas uh, was connected to the idea of uh, the virtue of a human being. Again, this idea of fulfillment or consummation of the human being. The human being, in order to be a free human being, had to be a complete human being. There had to be a fulfillment of the nature of the human being.